So yeah, but thank you so much for the kind words. That, that really means a lot. And as I'm like staring down writing new songs, it's helpful to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh well i can't write a song anymore that's uh, a shame <laughs> <laughs> so this podcast is about you obviously we started in your journey in music uh yeah. obviously uh huge acting career but i want to focus on the music aspect of your your career and obviously the brand new record which i love thank it's you so good the thank last you. the last song on the record is my favorite one. Oh, that's fitting Talking it's about so good. Hometown. Yeah. When you leave home and like the lyrics, I'm like, Oh, like so good about like yeah, leaving your dad. And like the mm -hmm. whole thing, it really hit to me because my family and I recently moved to Nashville from okay. San Diego. I lived in born and raised in San Diego oh, my whole, whole life. I lived in San Francisco for, oh. yeah, we did the opposite of you. <laughs> That's I lived amazing. in San Francisco for a little bit of time, but then moving here and going back to, you know, San Diego for the holidays and stuff. It's just crazy that we're like, all right, well, see you later. We're going to go get on a plane and take your only grandkids from you. I know, God. <laughs> it's so brutal. Yeah, it's it, I wrote it exactly about that feeling of like mm -hmm. being at the airport and having to be like, well, OK, uh, all right. Well, see you soon. And I just I don't know, like I was like, how do we capture that feeling that's like both the worst and the best because you know how lucky you are that you like have this like pang of bittersweet you know mm -hmm. like uh love there um but it is it's hard every single time mm -hmm. for sure yeah. yeah it's like uh my father-in-law is like you know get ready for what he said something along the lines of it like get ready to cry tomorrow or whatever. It was like the day before, you know, the night before we left in the morning, it was like, get, get, prepare for crying time or something like that. And it's like, so true. I know. Yeah. We are feeling, it's like a joke now in our family um, that like, we can't, you can't let the goodbye linger too long. It's just mm -hmm. like, you just have to like say goodbye and you got to get out of there <laughs> or else that's when the emotion starts to bubble up. Sure. Like, you know, if you can just kind of give a quick hug, like, okay, bye. See ya. You it's don't like goodbye, see you later or something like that. Isn't that the same? Yeah. <laughs> Confront the emotion. Um, but if the hug lasts a little too long, then you're you're done. <laughs> exactly. You're screwed. Well, <laughs> I love yeah. it. How how did you get into music? Obviously, your parents are in the the pecan business, which isn't right. anything to do with what you're doing. So right. how did you get into music? Well, my mom was a singer, like not professionally, but she loved to sing, and I grew up you know, watching her sing in kind of like local like church and, mm -hmm. you know, pageants. And <laughs> she would just always kind of be singing a solo and singing at home. And so I grew up, um, you know, kind of like being introduced to performing in that way and, and seeing my mom sing. So there was this love of music early on and love of singing and sort of like discovery of like, oh, I can I can sing, I think. I think I can hit the note and I think it doesn't sound terrible. And so I kind of grew up with with that and, and being interested in doing it more and being interested in performing. Um, but, you know, where I lived, there wasn't like a ton of opportunity to do that. It was like you had church, you had school, you had, you know, kind of the random talent show, maybe. Um, but it was like, oh, I don't know what to really do with this. And I'd didn't see anyone around me pursuing it, but um, I ended up doing this reality show when I was 13. It was like American Idol for kids. Um, okay. And it was only one season. It was called American Juniors. It was like for real, like the same team as American Idol. It was after the first season. I think they were trying to make it like we'll have American Idol for like uh, older the adults and then adults, like the, and then the we'll kids have version of the song. For kids. Oh, interesting. So they did one season and I, you know, saw it advertised and I was like, I have to do it. Um, I have to audition. Like I was obsessed, you know, everyone was obsessed with that first season of American Idol. So it was like, mm. oh, I want to try this. And so um, I ended up auditioning in like Chattanooga, Tennessee, <laughs> and was fully expecting to like be up against the most talented kids in America like I was just like oh I'm not gonna have a shot like I think I can sing but I'm not mm -hmm. like you know some like prodigy sure. um and so went and auditioned and then ended up making it you know 
they want you to go to LA. And then I was like, oh my gosh, it's happening. And so I went to LA and then, you know, ended up being on that show for like the whole summer. And the way that it worked, it was, it was different than American Idol with it. Like American Idol, you'd have someone eliminated each week, but the way mm -hmm. American Juniors worked, cause they didn't want to be like too traumatizing. Too brutal. But, yeah. Was there, we're going to have this like five piece like group at the end of the summer like at the end of the show so each week someone gets voted into the group oh so, it's the opposite so the, yeah so the remaining kids get another shot the next week to like try and get voted into the group okay. um so i ended up not being voted into the group devastatingly oh, yeah um, well you showed them <laughs> <laughs> but so that meant I would sing every week. And so, yeah, we just spent like the whole summer as a family, like out in LA. And we all kind of credit that summer as like really changing all of our trajectory. Like my brother's an actor. My sister mm -hmm. lives out here now as an actor. Like I'm doing my thing. So it was definitely like we got, you know, stars in our eyes that summer. And we were like, oh, this is an option. Like we can do this. Um and so that's kind of like the beginning, beginning of, I guess, how I found myself in this world at all. Mm -hmm. um, but there's been plenty of like twists and turns since then. But, sure. Um, yeah. But getting into that contest, I mean, seeing that this show is happening and having yeah. your parents willing to support the fact that, okay, we're going to take you to Chattanooga, which is probably a few hour drive, I would imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. getting out here and then, you know, doing the whole process of like, was there like, waiting around I bet like to get into the audition and all that stuff to yeah. really back you that's pretty amazing yeah yeah I think they just were like super supportive of what we wanted to try but they mm -hmm. had no idea what to I mean I think I always think about it as like they were learning like the same time as we were mm -hmm. like it was just like they're like, oh, my kid wants to try this. I guess I'll try it. And I think they were just as surprised when it was like, oh, they want to go to Hollywood. Not that they didn't think I could, but I think it was just like, oh, wait, oh, oh, this is an option. So I think for them too, it was like that kind of uh, validation or like, no, yeah, like I think they have a, a shot at this shot. ever kind of helped give them the confidence to keep supporting us too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're, uh, I'm very lucky for sure to have them and have their support and like to still have their support is uh, pretty cool. Yeah. It's, I mean, validation is the perfect word to describe it once it's, oh, wow, she got on the show. Like, wow, we don't, we're not, we're not the only ones that think she's a great singer. Right. Right. Like, exactly. Yeah. Cause my parents are, you know, they're Southern, they're very like humble and like self deprecating. They're not like, oh yeah, my kid's a star. They're like, I don't like <laughs> right. you're good but like i'm your mom like right. it, it was very like oh okay <laughs> sure yeah. yeah and then getting this validation from other people especially sending you to hollywood and becoming on a show that's right quite, uh, quite the accomplishment uh, prior to that though you know you talked about singing were you ever in piano or anything like that growing up or was it not vocal really. lessons i was not disciplined enough and it's one of my biggest regrets <laughs> now being someone in music there's so many times where i'm like Man, it'd be really nice to uh, be able to play the piano right now uh, better than I can. And, you know, anyway, yeah, I, I didn't like take a lot of lessons. I was, I took gymnastics when I was a kid. Like I did dance. Like it wasn't like, um, I don't know. Like I, I just had this love of singing and performing, but I, yeah, I, for, for whatever reason, I didn't think to like stick with piano lessons or I don't know. Yeah, I wish I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but musical really theater, stuff like that. I mean, obviously you're an actor. So were you in, in involved in that quite a bit as well? There, No, like there wasn't really, like I said, there wasn't like a ton of opportunities for that where I lived. Okay. Like, and I was so just, I have three siblings. So we were there, we were all doing so much in our town. And I don't know, it was just like before the show, like after the show, that sort of like, sent me on this other path of like, okay, yeah, I'm going to try and find someone to help me have original songs. I'm going to okay. like go to New York and um, figure out how to like get into this business. Mm -hmm. um, so that definitely happened, you know, kind of like after the show in my like early teens, I definitely was like, 
okay, how do I like find my way back to LA? How do I find my way into this business like that? I became pretty obsessed with it at that point. Um, but it was still, I was still a long way away from like writing my own songs, being an artist, like putting stuff out. Um, so that all didn't really click in until I kind of like moved to LA and started trying to write songs on my own. Um, okay. Yeah. Cause you were what you said 13 when you were on the show. Yeah. And yeah. then you put out a record. What was your first record in 2011? <laughs> yes. Essentially. Well, like, essentially, I, but between there, was it when, once you get back to, to your hometown of yeah. Georgia, is it like, okay, I was on the show and then now what, how do I get, how do I get back there? Like, how did, yeah, how did you basically. maneuver that? Like, it was just like, okay, my dad has the pecan factory he's mm -hmm. running and he's like, okay, now my daughter wants to like sing. So, uh, what do I do? Like, uh, and so we were, you know, my dad was smart enough to like not fall for like a lot of scams that come mm -hmm. after you do shows like that. Um, you know, I feel like people take advantage of like people who have no experience in the business and they're like, Hey, I'll, I'll help your daughter uh, get a record deal for $30,000 a song and right. you know, just stuff like that where you're like, I don't know. Um, so we avoided those for the most part, which was good. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like my parents were just like, okay, what do we do? Um, and so my dad would just cold call people and be like, my daughter is a singer. Like, <laughs> can you help? So we, we started, you know, kind of like trying to find people in Georgia and, Anyway, I eventually got to New York and, and met this like uh, husband and wife team who helped me make some song like original songs. And again, at this point, I wasn't writing my own songs. I just was like very new to everything, very green. Like, and I, you know, it was around the early 2000s, like mid early 2000s, where it was like pop stars. And I saw like Britney and NSYNC and Backstreet mm -hmm. Boys. And that's what I liked. And so I was like, cool. Like, I just want to be that. Like, I don't know what the, what the problem is. Right. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I eventually like recorded a CD when I was like 15 of all songs that like I didn't write, but they were just like these little pop songs. And, mm -hmm. you know, they got me to like Radio Disney, which got me wow. to um performing these like little shows and meeting other kids that were doing the same thing and um that kind of got me to managers and you know people that my dad could be like hey like can you like take the baton like I don't know what I'm <laughs> what I'm doing here um but yeah so we just sort of like would I don't know everything just sort of leads you to the next thing mm -hmm. and I eventually found my way to like graduating high school, having enough going on. Cause I was also, um, I had gotten like an agent during this time in my life too. It was, and was auditioning for things. And so I had auditioned for a Nickelodeon show mm -hmm. that eventually was, uh, would become big time rush, but I kind of gotten enough like stuff going for me to, uh, to take the chance of like moving to LA over going to college. Like I had gotten accepted to university of Georgia and I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to go there. And then I was just like, I don't want to go. And my parents were like, okay, I guess we'll like, you know, cause I just was like, I need to get to LA. That's where everyone is. That's where it happens. Like, that's what I'm, I'm already like behind. Um, so I ended up moving to LA. I had like a music manager that I was working with. I had this like, audition uh I think I'd either gotten the part or was about I don't know the mm -hmm. timeline's a little blurry but sure. enough going on to like um make it seem like a good idea to move to LA and kind of pursue this for real mm -hmm. um and so yeah like once I got out here that's when I really started to like meet people and I'd written songs before that but that's when you really I don't know I just got sort of invested in the community here and would meet other writers. And uh, that's what eventually led to that 2011 EP. Oh, okay. But yeah. it sounds like you didn't start really writing songs until what, about like 15, you put out that record that was all not your songs. Right. right? And I, yeah, I probably around like 17, 18, like I was brave enough to kind of like do some sessions and 
talk, you know, have people help me write songs. And um, I, but yeah, I don't feel like I was really confident and like tapping into that skill uh, until late, yeah, like 19, 20, when I moved out here and, and really kind of, I don't know, got more confident of like, okay, I, I could have maybe something to say in a song. Like I, maybe I can offer more than, um, than what I think I can. Sure. But which is incredible. Cause you, I mean, you're a really, really good songwriter and, and lyricist, Thank which you. is incredible to <laughs> Thank find you. out that you didn't even start doing that until <laughs> you're 19 years old. I mean, talk yeah. about people watching and being like, Oh, I can actually do this because <laughs> <laughs> to me, I was like, oh, she's had to be writing since like 2003 or whatever she was on that show. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't really. I, I'm I'm kind of surprised as surprised as you are sometimes. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, I don't know if I can write. Like I still, when I sit down, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I got it in me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's just that thing. It's like always kind of scary and mm -hmm. uh, vulnerable to try, but um yeah, I know. It's crazy. It is crazy. So, yeah. I mean, to be that much. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so you, the, the record comes out in, in 2011 and, and you do some touring with the yeah. album. So there must have been interest there. Like when you put the record out, was that kind of scary? Like what was your feeling on this? Because it's now it's your own body of work. It's stuff that you had written yeah. yourself. Yeah, it, it was. It was scary, but I was so. um eager to do that at that point like I had all this energy of just like because I don't know there's kind of this thing that happens when you're starting out or that can happen where you get stuck in this loop of like managers and producers and uh executive type of people you know believe in you and see something in you but it's they're also just people and they don't really know what's going to work or not. And so I think there can be fear on all sides of like, well, we got to make sure it's the perfect setting. It's the perfect thing. It's the perfect song. Like, so I was getting kind of lost in this, what I felt like was this loop of like people telling me like, you got to just keep trying this. You got to keep trying that. And I was like, it can't be that hard to like put something out. Like I, I was just like, I, I don't get uh, what's happening and so at the point where I put out the 2011 EP I was like so eager and like anxious to to put something out there and to get going that I I don't remember feeling a lot of fear at that time mm -hmm. I was just like finally like I and, and it was really rewarding because and it was like kind of my first um experience with really taking ownership of what of my career and what I was doing it was like okay, I'm going to go write these songs. I'm going to put them out and I'm going to go, you know, my friends are going on tour. They're going to take me out. Like it was so much of like my doing that it was really empowering and like a good mm -hmm. lesson to learn early on of just like, you can do a lot of stuff. Like what you don't need to like wait on someone to give you permission. Mm -hmm. um, especially when things seem to be kind of clicking. It's like, I just sort of followed that and it was really cool. Um, and yeah, really exciting to like put out songs that I had had my hand in writing that I really felt proud of and that really represented me at the time. Um, and to get to go play them live and see the reaction from a crowd. And um, I really felt like it was the first time, I don't know, I felt like an artist and I felt mm -hmm. like people were like kind of seeing what I could do and uh, and then liking it. And so, it was obviously like super rewarding and um, exciting. It was just an exciting time. Yeah. Was it hard? I mean, from there, you put your next record didn't come out for like five or six years later. Yeah. Was it like, were you working as like an actor in between there? Like, how are you juggling both professions? Yeah, I was. So at that point, I was also on Big Time Rush and, and okay. episodes were airing. And so I think there was you know, uh, I kind of had that out there that people were familiar with. So I mm -hmm. wasn't a total like, um, unknown kind of like out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and so I think that helped me and kind of people just being familiar with me. Um, but I, after the EP came out, after I did the tour, it was kind of like, you know, felt like I kind of had some momentum people, 
were liking the songs and I signed a record deal um, late 2011 or, or early 2012, um, but it was sort of starting to be in the works late 2011. So it was like, oh yeah, this EP, we love it. Like we want to sign you, we want to develop you. We want to like help you, you know, mm -hmm. make an album and put it out. And this is like early, you know, 2011, 2012. So it was like, I don't know when Spotify happened, but it was before like streaming really. Right. Um, right. And so I was like, cool, this is amazing. <laughs> like what I've been working toward and um, signed the deal and kind of, stopped auditioning for a second because it was getting to be a lot to juggle between mm -hmm. like uh, auditioning for stuff and kind of working on shows and then trying to also pursue music. And so I was like, all right, I signed this deal. Like, I'm just going to focus on that. Um, and so I did for like, you know, that's what you did. It was like, here, go write an album. Mm -hmm. So it was a couple of years of writing um, and then it sort of felt like it started to stall out a couple of years in and like, without getting too into the like mm -hmm. industry talk of it all, it was like, right. you know, there, the way my deal was set up was sort of unconventional. I didn't have like this A&R team. I didn't have like a lot of people really looking out for me at the label. So, um, a few years in, I was like, okay, I need like, what do I do now? I have these songs, we've kind of written these songs. Are they good? Are they bad? Do we want to put them out? Do we not? Like it's sort of, you know, long story short, it was just probably like five years of me writing, having songs, not knowing what to do with them, kind of getting lost, kind of getting shelved, like very kind of classic story that happens to young artists. And mm -hmm. so I uh, eventually, uh, was like, okay, I need to, again, sort of found myself at this place where it was like, I need to put stuff out. How hard can it be? Like, this is when I shrivel up. Like, I, I need to be out there doing stuff. Like, I need to be building something. And so um, I sort of had gotten to that point right before, that was sort of the impetus to like put out my Tired Eyes EP in 2017. Okay. Um, so those were like some songs that I had written while I was signed to that record deal and some, you know, more, more recently. And, um, but it was like, someone came on board, they were like, we want to help you put something out. And so I obviously was like, jumped at the chance. Cause I was like, I just need to put some of these songs out there. Like they're good. Um, and so that's the short version of like how I got the Tired Eyes EP out in 2017. Okay. And yet, I mean, you have a huge record on that, or on that uh, EP, which yeah. we don't know. And that, yeah. did it just, how did that kind of take off for you? Yeah, it was truly like, you know, I know like sometimes when people talk about stuff taking off online, it can feel kind of confusing because it's like, well, what really happened? <laughs> like, how did it really uh, take off like that? And for that song, it truly was this like organic, like crazy, like, I was like, what's going on? Like, I don't know why. I just remember waking up one day and being like, whoa, it got like 200,000 views. This like live video we did overnight. Like that's kind of crazy, right? Like that's not normal. <laughs> and so I just, it just kind of kept taking off, taking off. And like to this day, like that song's not, I don't feel like it's slowed down. <laughs> Like, no, it it's, I mean, it's used to get all these views, all these streams, which is obviously really exciting. Um, and it's like, I feel like that song really helped give me some information as an artist of like, oh, okay, like this type of, you know, subject matter, this type of sounds like this feeling uh, might be something, you know, you're good at might be something to like chase down a little more or explore a little more um as a songwriter as an artist like it was uh it's crazy but it's I still get people discovering that song to this day and like sending me messages and it's crazy it really has a life of its own and um I didn't I didn't do anything <laughs> I just was like cool 
I have no idea how to do that again. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> when that yeah. happens, is that something you're thinking about when it comes to the next record? Like, are you like, oh, how do I, do I chase that? Or like when you're, when you're going for your, your next album or your next EP, Yeah. how does, how does that affect, you know, you moving forward at least that? Well, it's funny time. because um, I, you know, I sort of at that time in my life, still had these like pop dreams. Like I, you know, like I said, I grew up on Britney, Christina, uh, arenas, big pyrotechnics, like big pop glitzy stuff. And mm -hmm. I still was like, that's, I think what I want as an artist, that's mm -hmm. what I want to do. And so I, you know, I, I think when the You Don't Know kind of took off, it was exciting, but it was also a little scary for me because I was like, okay, like it's a ballad, like it's really kind of heavy. Um, I don't know if I want to be that type of artist, <laughs> which is, you know, a very classic artist thing to do, um, to take something that's working and be like, cool, I don't want to do that. <laughs> right, right. Um, you know, I feel like I see it a lot and come across it a lot. And I'm like, yeah, I know what you're doing. Um, but that's what I did. I was like, I don't want to like be this ballad artist. Like I want to put out pop songs. And so I put out this EP in 2018 called Kool-Aid and it was way more poppy, way more like pop production. Um, and, you know, to give myself some credit, I, ne I never feel like I sacrificed like the depth I wanted to go lyrically. I feel like I was still kind of representing, you know, a lot of what I was going through as a person at that time. I had a lot of like, I uh, anger like I want to like stand up I'm finding my voice I'm finding my kind of like power as a woman and as an artist and I feel like a lot of those poppier songs kind of reflect that the time I was in um but yeah after I put that out you know it I I wanted one of those songs to kind of have a moment like you don't know or have mm -hmm. like a a moment and they didn't and I was like you know a lot of people liked them and still like them to this day so it's not like I view it as like this massive flop but no I think it's like, a rad record yeah I do too and I still really like it um but I I was also at that point independent and so I was I put that out through AWOL and I was like figuring out what it meant to do that and kind of I don't know so it was a big learning process but mm -hmm. um I'm glad I did that EP because I do feel like it helped me kind of scratch this itch that I had been wanting to like do bigger, poppier songs. And so I did it and I'm proud of it and it came out. And then after that, I mean, I had a couple songs on there that were ballads. Like I didn't completely abandon that. Like there's never fade on that album and or on that EP and then a song called don't let it change you. And so I was still sort of, um, uh, doing that side of my uh artistry as well um but yeah after that came out I was like okay like this you know those songs streamed the best off that EP mm -hmm. like these ballads these kind of more emotional more introspective and I think it was a again like a good thing for me to go through as an artist because it's like okay you know, what are you really wanting? What are you really trying to do here? Like, what are you in this for? Is it to like have some big pop song, some big pop show with like big production and lights and costumes? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't think that's, if you're really like being honest with yourself, Caitlin, I'm talking about myself in the third person for some reason. Um, what is like your kind of natural instinct? Like what's, what do you, as a person, I just was like, I don't think this big pop thing is really me if I'm being honest. And so it was like, again, like as a writer, as an artist, you had to have all these moments of like re reframing like what you're doing and like what you're after. And that was a big turning point for me because I feel like it was like, why don't I just start writing about what I'm really going through. Like, 
I have a song on Kool-Aid uh, called Love You For Life, which I love that song. Um, it's a like little pop song about, um, or no, sorry, hate to t- wait, I'm getting confused. Basically I was writing these songs that didn't necessarily reflect what was happening in my life. It was like, yeah. I'm writing about going out and having fun and partying and like, oh, leaving with a guy. Meanwhile, I'm like married. <laughs> Which is like, not to say you can't write about, you know, stuff that you don't experience firsthand. But I was like, what would happen if I really started to write about some of this stuff I'm going through as a 27, 28 year old person who's married, who's like been in this career for a long time. There's a lot of like uh, emotional things I'm going through mentally, things I'm going through emotionally that are difficult. Like what if I just really try to channel that and kind of get back to my roots, if you will, of like songwriting, you know, kind of back to what I did, was doing in 2011 with my first EP where I was like writing really like, um, I don't know, just a little more like songwriter songs. And that's kind of what I started doing, you know, a couple years ago um, and really kind of what brought me to my most recent album um, was, sort of a return to and just an acceptance of like okay I'm gonna just try and write a lot of what I feel and what I'm going through and see what happens with that instead of chasing down this career that I sort of am maybe gripping too tightly like uh of this early version of like little young Caitlin like what did she want she wanted this like pop star pop girl Mm -hmm. dreams like um what if I sort of let go of that a little bit and see what that brings and so anyway I feel like I've been talking for one no hours (laughs) (laughs) no no idea if I'm making sense (laughs) no totally you're making total sense I love the fact and I thought you're gonna go and you didn't go there yet but I was wondering about because you redid a lot of the songs or not a lot of songs but you redid the songs acoustic and you did kool-aid sugar-free which I thought was the most creative thing ever (laughs) I was like, oh, that's like, a, yeah. that makes so much sense. That's so amazing. <laughs> that was, um, yeah. <laughs> was that yeah. what kind of drew, drove that idea? It was like, oh, these yeah. people are resonating with the more singer songwriter side of me. Yeah, probably. Like, I think it was like, oh, what if I sort of re- reimagined these songs as a little more stripped down? Because lyrically, I feel like there's, like I said, they're still saying something that, you know, I believed in and I resonated mm-hmm. with. And, um, and still do. And so, yeah, I was like, oh yeah, what if we kind of reimagined these acoustically? Um, and yeah, I think it was cool. I, I think a lot of people listen to those versions, maybe even a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, sugar-free. Cool sugar free. So good. <laughs> pretty, pretty fun when I <laughs> thought of that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's really, really, really creative. <laughs> so funny <laughs> um you did before you put, we'll talk about your new record but you put yeah. out a handful of what about seven eight nine singles in 2020 <laughs> yeah like, you released like a bunch of songs that, you, well it was like single 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 and then none of them made the record which you had a whole full body of work after that um I know. yeah <laughs> were, were those songs all kind of if we're talking like 2020 obviously the world had closed down and nobody's really working at this point especially right. in music and even in film and tv for a while yeah um yeah. what did you have just like where were you did you have a lot of time to sit and write or like how did you manage that yeah i mean i started writing so like early 2019 i was like okay you know cool Aid, cool Aid had come out i was sort of like re assessing like what I wanted to do next. And I think it was a, it's a fun time. I mean, fun is, is one word, one way of putting it. Um, it's with streaming Mm -hmm. and with sort of like how the music industry is always kind of evolving. I feel like it's a cool time, especially for independent artists like me to just sort of try stuff. It's like, you don't have to follow you know, this formula of like songs into an EP, songs into an album, like Mm -hmm. this to this, like you can sort of just try a bunch of different methods of like getting your music out there. And so I just sort of wanted to take advantage of that and see what would happen if I just kind of started putting 
singles out. And, um, you know, I think it's always uh, interesting to just put stuff out and be like, okay, are we going to turn this into an EP or should we just put another one out or should we kind of do this? Or And so I started writing some stuff and didn't know if it was going to be an EP, didn't know if it was going to be an album, didn't know if it was going to be singles. My only focus really was to like, what am I, how do I sort of start getting these ideas across that I want to be writing about? How do I sort of get back to, um, or just push myself as a songwriter and, and see what that does for, for my artist thing. And so uh, I also did, so I kind of started that in 2019 and that's when I also did um, Songland, which was, oh, yeah. which was another kind of like uh, very like, didn't see that coming. Why don't I just try it? And then ended up winning the episode, which was really cool. <laughs> And a really cool experience. And I got to work with like Shane McAnally and mm -hmm. just kind of thought on of like be introduced to this whole new group of people. And um, that kind of reignited a lot of uh, energy in me to kind of like keep writing, keep putting stuff out. And that is when, yeah, I just started putting singles out and I kind of just kept that up in 2020. And yeah, especially when, the world ended <laughs> it mm -hmm. was like well yeah I sort of have an advantage here because this luckily a lot of my career hadn't depended on touring at that point it really mm -hmm. was just putting stuff out online and doing stuff through social media so I was like this is actually a great time for me to keep doing that mm -hmm. um and uh yeah so I just kind of kept doing it and then yeah I mean if jumping ahead to the album like I uh wrote started writing a lot of those songs in 2020 and yeah like you said I put out like one million singles and I started to sort of want to get back to like you know I want to make an album I want to see what that feels like to have like a full body of work and uh get to promote it like that and get to kind of have this chapter for my fans and um just have like a full project and so I went for it. <laughs> so did you start writing the album after you had the nine singles already ready to go? Like, were you releasing yeah, those? Like, and Yeah, some of those singles were songs I had written the year before. Like, okay. um, I, but yeah, I started writing a lot of those simultaneous, like when I was also putting other songs out. Okay. So Subject to Change was like, you I don't know if you knew the title or whatever at the time, but you knew that you're like, okay, these songs are going to batch together as a, this, this is going to make the record and these are going to be the singles. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have like a super clear idea. All I uh -huh. knew was like, um, I had had these singles. I had all these singles that I wanted to put out and then going through 2020 <laughs> right. and sort of facing a lot of the stuff that that brought up made me just really, get like I don't know honest about how I was feeling and it was like bringing up a lot of oh just a lot of shit and mm -hmm. I was like I feel like this should be you know on a project rather than just a one-off song like because I mean there's a song on the album called Downhill from here and mm -hmm. it's a really depressing song <laughs> and I kind of when I wrote it you know it was obviously very honest and very just how I felt that day and I was just like not very optimistic about the future and just how I how is this all going to play out like everything feels terrible and um I wrote it and I was like okay I, I love this song but it feels weird to just put this song out without some context I don't know it just felt and so that's when I sort of got the initial idea of like maybe this is an album instead of just singles um and so when I wrote that song I was like okay what else is what else is there because it just felt um like unlike a song I had written up to that point like it just felt way more honest than I've ever let myself be kind of way more like unfiltered and um raw I guess mm -hmm. and so once I sort of leaned into that, I felt like a lot of songs kind of fell out and they were all sort of around that feeling of just sort of sadness and 
grappling with change and how hard it was for me and how hard it is for me to, um, I don't know, like deal with uncertainty and deal with uh, unknown. And I just kind of liked it all kind of being around that theme. And that's where the title eventually came from, um, Subject to Change, which is just like sort of trying to get to acceptance uh, mm -hmm of life essentially and just how it's unpredictable and you never know what's coming yeah i mean it's such an honest record and <laughs> what i love about your songwriting is you it's not i mean you're you have pop songs and it is pop ish but it's yeah. like you know how to write like lyrics that are digestible to anyone like it's like how people go oh, i can write a pop song and it's like no you can't try it or it's like you you write or people will say something and you're like why didn't i think of that like that's how i feel like when i'm listening to your album like you say it in a way where it's like oh yeah like that's like the perfect way to put something but it's not wow. it's there's no it doesn't sound like you put too much effort into it because sometimes i'll listen to certain songs or lyrics and i'm like you're try like you can tell when they're trying to go like way too deep and like about it and it's like right. yours are it's deep and it's right. good but it's also very like wow like that's the perfect way to put that thing oh my god right. thank you that's yeah. really cool to hear thank you um it's a, yeah it's a great I mean, and and okay. this the the concepts behind some of the songs like uh all our friends are splitting up like i think that's such a like cool concept <laughs> as much as it's like a dark theme right. but like yeah. it's yeah. just one of those things that it's very relatable, I think, to people. Thanks. Directly, because of the way thanks. that you say it and, and the way that the songs come across. Yeah, thanks. I, I feel like I that's what I was going for. So it's really um, encouraging to hear you take that away from it. Like, I, I really tried to, um, I think a lot of times, you know, when you hear something that's like, oh, it's a little too deep, it's a little shrouded, and like, I don't know what you're saying. It's because it's, you know, not fun to like put something out, like all our friends are splitting up. It's like, obviously, but I tried to push myself to be like, what would I want to hear? Like, what do I really think? Like, how can I say this as plainly as possible in hopes that, like you said, it will relate to someone and they will be able to quickly and easily connect with it. And I think the easiest way to do that is to just say it sometimes <laughs> and like because with songs it's so easy to like hide stuff and mystery and you know like I don't know like I, it's it's a it's a mysterious process every time but mm -hmm. um I, I think that's what I was really trying to do with the album it's just like how can I just say it like and I'd write something and I'd be like no like that's just not plain enough and I think um yeah and and I had collaborators that were really um, helpful in, I don't know, just encouraging me to do it, you know, mm -hmm. and be like, well, it's honest, <laughs> like, but I think it's good and keep doing mm -hmm. it. And I think had I not, you know, had the support of people and, and people that I felt comfortable going there with too, I think made a big difference. And, um, yeah, it was a real, it felt like a really collaborative effort, but people really pushing me to, to just say it. And I think, uh, in the end, I'm, I'm really glad they did. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, it's amazing. Not a lot of people it, can do that, like yeah. be that honest and be that direct. The only, I don't, I don't want to compare you, but like the only person, like another person I could think of that does that is like Halsey. She's very good at just mm -hmm. like saying it. Yeah. And then being like, oh yeah, that's a great way to put this thing or use these words to describe something but it's direct and everyone can relate to it. And I feel like Zach's, that's what I hear when I listen to your record, not her, but just like yeah. the, the similar, not, I don't even want to say similar, but that yeah, no, style, I, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, what you're saying for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, that's a huge compliment. And I think I was inspired by uh, a lot of female, like singer songwriters that I felt like, yeah, just put it in a way that really hit me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, this is like the best feeling when you hear a song that says something that you're, you've are you been trying to say. Um, and I felt like if I could do that for people, that would be the best feeling ever. And mm -hmm. the way to do it was to 
get uncomfortable at some points and be like, well, I'm going to say this and uh, <laughs> everybody's going to hear it. And, uh, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, right. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess well, I'm doing it. Um, yeah. so, so yeah, but thank you so much for the kind words. That, that really means a lot. And as I'm like staring down, writing new songs, it's helpful to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh well I can't write a song anymore that's uh, a shame <laughs> <laughs> well I think you're doing awesome and Thank I want to touch real quickly on the, the side project you have with Will Anderson because I did see didn't you yeah. tour with uh, Parachute very early yeah. on yeah no I, I so forgot rad. to mention that as well because that's that was like my whole first half of last year was doing that with him um, but yes Parachute was one of the bands I toured with in 2012 2011 or 2012 kind of around the time I had put out that EP and um yeah we just clicked and became good friends and you know kept up over the years and uh we would sing a duet every night on that tour and we always had a blast doing it and then over the years we'd write songs together and yeah we came up with this idea to maybe have a duo project uh I think like late 2019 so before like the pandemic hit we were like oh we should like put these songs out like do a little side project why not um and so then when the pandemic hit it was like oh we have like plenty of time to write and uh kind of really try to do this and so yeah lit or a first thing last year so I'm getting all my years confused because it's 2022 now but know, which is weird. early 2021 <laughs> we put out a single but we kind of wrote a lot of that in 2020 and it was really fun like it's so fun as a solo artist to because I'm such a collaborative person as well like um it's like it was so much fun to be in like a duo with and have another person to bounce off of like I was like oh this is like no wonder people like start bands <laughs> I'm like, this is so much more fun than just doing everything alone and having all the weight on your, your shoulders only. Like, this mm -hmm. is the best. And especially someone like Will, who's an absolute maniac. Um, and we would just have a blast together. So, yeah, it was really fun. And I'm sure we'll do more Reeve songs at some point. I was going to ask, is that going to be like a project forward? Or yeah, it yeah, I think so. We're like always like, let's write. It, it just feels very like something we can pop in and out of hopefully mm -hmm. um, as we both do our kind of own solo projects or parachute or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think we'll have an, some more songs at some point. Yeah. Amazing. And I want to get to play live with him too. It was a shame we didn't get to like play any shows or do any touring because it was COVID, but. Um, yeah, that's what I was, I was going to see if you were going to, if that was even a thought maybe to play a show or. Yeah, we sure should. We should do that, it. We that'd should. be rad. I know. I mean, yeah. I'm a huge parachute fan. I got to interview them for this podcast year when before COVID, when you can talk to people in person and everything. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hard to remember. Sure. Uh, yeah, they're great. They're the best. Yeah. Very cool. And you have yeah. a tour coming up, or you you just did a a tour at the end of December, right? I, or mid. -December. I did. Yeah, I played like five shows, just kind of supporting the album uh, mm -hmm. in like New York, Chicago, Nashville, and Dallas, and then the LA show had to get postponed. Um, oh wow! Yeah, it was like right when Omicron was like ramping up, and everyone had COVID. <laughs> right, right, like, yeah. Um, <laughs> I might not want to play a show. Um, so yeah, we, we're rescheduling that at some point, hopefully in the next month. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm opening up for Johnny Swim this spring, which mm -hmm. I'm so excited about. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of just counting down the days. I'm like, so you guys ready or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, yeah. I, I'm excited that I will, like I said, I just, we just moved to Nashville. I haven't really had a chance to experience a whole lot here because everything right. was shut down and, you know, we got two kids and all that, but you're playing the Grand Ole Opry. I need to go I see know. this show. It's insane. I, I, like, we were supposed to do this tour in October and we pushed it and like, I, uh oh, sorry, it's uh, super loud. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Our gardener just arrived. Uh, should I just, okay. should I keep talking? Yeah, well, well, yeah it's all good. Well, okay. I'm all, I only have one more question for you after yeah, this. Yeah. I just thought that was um, so cool. But 
Yeah, we were supposed to do that tour in October and we pushed it to the spring, but in uh, or, yeah, in October, we were supposed to play the amphitheater in Nashville, which was going to be super amazing as well. Mm -hmm. But then since it's like not amphitheater season when we're going back, they changed it to the Opry and I'm like, oh my God, I get to play the Opry? Like, that's crazy. Yeah, so like one really of the most excited. iconic venues of all time. I know, yeah. So... Should be cool. I'm really, really looking forward to that. That'll be awesome. Hopefully like you can I, come. No, I'm going. I, I just right. sent, I saw that you're playing there and I just sent my wife like a calendar invite. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. hey, <laughs> like I blocked the time out already. Yeah. Like, hey. Eight plans, we're going. <laughs> so we have a couple of months to figure out a babysitter situation. Yeah, um, you got but, time. I, I think hopefully you can get something figured oh, out. Oh, we'll get it figured out. Don't <laughs> worry. I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Well, Kaylin, thank you so much for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. Like I said, I love the record. And thank you so much for the, the pecans. They're amazing. Yes. Thanks so much for having me. This was so nice to get to talk. And I'm so glad you liked the album. And thanks for all the kind words and encouragement about it. It's, um, it's really cool to have it out and to just have it be out there. It's still fairly new. So yeah. Um, it's been cool. Thanks for letting me talk about it. And, um, oh, no. yeah, thank me. you. My, I have a, one more quick question for you. Yeah. Um, I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, it's funny because I, there's a lyric in one of my songs called I'm done taking advice from anybody under 50, 50 uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which was me just ranting about how I don't think anyone knows anything. Um, but that being said, uh, take this with a grain of salt. Like I, I do have like a weird relationship to advice because I feel like it's obviously a very valid question. And I just always want to give like a good answer because I know when I was just starting out and, and even still, I look to artists and people for like guidance on what the most important thing is. So anyway, I just always want to, uh, everyone's very different. Everyone has different strengths, different paths. Like no one piece of advice is going to be the perfect fit. But I think, I don't know, like something that I really feel like I've learned in the past, you know, really through coming up and kind of in even talking about my story and seeing the different moments I've had, like, it feels like a lot of when things would click for me is when I was more focused on like the stuff I was making and like, how can I bring my own point of view to this? How can I trust that my instincts are good enough? Or I think I have this tendency to look outward for like, hey, what should I be doing? Hey, is this good enough? Hey, is this the right thing to do? Like, is this how people do it? And I think that can just, not that that's a bad thing, but it can just sort of be a waste of time eventually because it's like what I really feel like I should have been focused on and what I really try to focus on now is like just feeding my, oh God, how do I say this in a way that isn't annoying? um like soul I guess of just like what moves me as a person what like do I want to say what's something that I think is important for people to hear or helpful or might make them feel less alone or might make them might resonate with them because the whole point of like making a song or making art is to like give language to feelings or to connect us all and to um, give words to a feeling we've had that we didn't know how to express. And so like, how can you figure out how to do that better and better? Which means like, right, you know, if it's songwriting, like it was for me, it's like, how can I keep getting more honest? How can I like keep getting down to the bottom of feelings? Like, how can I keep you know, improving as a writer, pushing myself as this and not worrying so much about the noise of like, well, you know, this TikTok thing, or like, you should be doing this, or you should be getting yourself out that like, that's a part of it. It's a business, it's an industry, whatever. But like, I think the best way, I think the more you can focus on finding your voice and like finding your lane and finding what feels 
like uh, when you do it, pe people notice or people pay attention. Like, oh, that's that's something you're good at. Like, that's that makes sense to me. Like when I wrote a song like You Don't Know and it starts getting all these views, it's like, oh, like that's interesting. Just like, I don't know, like caring more about finding your voice as an artist, finding your voice, your voice as a writer, uh, and trying your best to like silence everything else and trust that that, that will lead to something, even when it doesn't feel like it will, um, has been a big deal for me personally as an artist and a writer. And so maybe that resonates with, with people starting out is just try to just, I, and I don't know, maybe people don't struggle with this as much as I did when I was coming up, which was just like caring so much about how I was perceived and how I was coming across and am I doing the right thing? I think if you can try and quiet that, the, the sooner the better, like the better off you are to like probably getting closer to like finding the thing you're really meant to say and do. Um, and yeah, don't get so caught up in the timeline of things and in like, markers of success and where you were supposed to be by now. Like, I think all of that stuff is just, it can be like poison to you if you let it really take over. Um, so as much as you can like relax and just do it and listen to that inner voice thing and find it and, and figure out what it sounds like, I think the better off you are. <laughs>